In an age of constant, all-encompassing internet access, video games are becoming increasingly malleable, changing at the whims of fans, developers, and wider influences. Most games today will improve, change entirely, or even disappear overnight. So many, in fact, that it can be hard to keep track of them. So, let's have a look at the Influx Influx. DICE is a subsidiary of EA that has launched many a game in its lifetime, but the launch of Battlefield 4 was particularly catastrophic. The game was intended to be a flagship title for the new console generation. However, things didn't turn out exactly as expected for EA's powerhouse franchise. The series' new modern military shooter would come to be defined by its plethora of technical issues. However, the controversy was not limited to bugs and glitches. In fact, the story of Battlefield 4 delves into legal challenges, drastic measures on the part of EA, and a fundamental shift in DICE's priorities as a developer. The game's survival relied on the years spent fixing it after its launch, a feat made attainable only by the existence of the new console generation. So let's dive into it, shall we? 2013 was an exciting year for video games, but sometimes hype can carry a little too much weight in the industry. In June, E3 was in full swing, and amongst the buzz surrounding the brand new PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, EA featured Battlefield 4, the game to bring the Battlefield franchise into the new generation. It will happen, I promise. Graphical improvements were showcased alongside a new Levolution mechanic, where maps could change dynamically as the match progressed. The game would follow a similar premium model to Battlefield 3, where customers willing to spend twice as much in the game would receive early access to upcoming expansions, all of which were announced before the game's release. EA and DICE had their post-launch plan carefully detailed in advance. A closed alpha launched around this time with an open beta later in October. During said beta, videos and images of various glitches circled message boards and game news sites. But none of this was out of the ordinary. It was believed that these would be fixed before the game's launch. And they probably would have been, that is, if the game wasn't due to release in the same month. Battlefield 4 released first on last gen systems and PC on the 29th of October 2013 to a wave of complaints surrounding frequent crashes, physics glitches, bugs that wipe both single player and multiplayer progress, and severe netcode issues that allowed for one hit kills and pervasive kill trading. Battlefield 4 will just stop working in the middle of matches. DICE has rolled out a few stability updates, and I've noticeably gotten smoother frame rates and less crashes thanks to that, but it still crashes. Needless to say, the launch did not go smoothly. DICE were quick to list the main problems with the game that they were targeting. It's fair to assume that they could have spent, say, a couple of weeks tweaking things and then everything would be ship shape. But that would be severely underestimating the magnitude of the problem. and yep it just cut out hey did your guys sound just cut out <laughs> dice had their work cut out for them two weeks later after the launch of the game's playstation 4 version the battlefield servers experienced a ddos attack a distributed denial of service attack overwhelms its target with useless data, bringing the entire system to a screeching halt. And that was the last thing that the game needed at the time. The servers were back online a few days later, but the damage was done. Players were running out of patience. Less than a month after Battlefield 4's launch, and shortly after the release of the Xbox One version, DICE made a formal statement to appease the angry fans. DICE's general manager stated that resolving the launch issues is our number one priority, and that they will not move on to other projects until we are sure that Battlefield 4 meets and exceeds your expectations. With this, they announced a double XP event in an attempt to satiate players. Patches and fixes persisted throughout the month of November, but DICE and EA weren't going to let that stop their post-launch plans. 
I don't think they were ready for December. Battlefield 4's first paid expansion, China Rising, became available for premium members. It was broken. Despite the one-hit-kill patch releasing on PC on the same day, China Rising brought with it even more connection problems, amongst other various issues. Suddenly, EA were questioning the fate of their meticulously planned release schedule. Enough so that... DICE announced that future expansions would be delayed. To quote, We're not moving on to future projects or expansions until we sort out all the issues with Battlefield 4. See that? That is a 7% drop in shares in one day. To be fair, Battlefield 4 had already sparked a downwards trend, but I don't think delaying future expansions reassured their shareholders. In fact, said shareholders did have a valid reason to be concerned. DICE's other unrelated projects would also suffer from this delay. Mirror's Edge Catalyst would be delayed twice, missing its original February 2016 release date by four months. Star Wars Battlefront couldn't afford the same luxury, as it was planned to release not long before the new film in 2015. As such, it was severely lacking in content at launch. EA's Patrick Soderlund admitted that a single player campaign was dropped in order to meet the film's launch window. While this doesn't explicitly confirm that Battlefield 4 had an impact on its development, the fact that Star Wars Battlefront was lacking even in multiplayer features does make it a genuine possibility. Winding time back to 2013, EA share prices were already recovering by the next day, but it was merely a sign of things to come. An official post was made on the Battlefield 4 forums detailing the top 22 issues in the game that they planned to address. Yes, 22. In the weeks leading up to the post, the developers used the forum to let fans know what was going on, but this was the first time that a concrete list of patch goals had been published since the game's launch. Law firm Holzer, Holzer & Thistle LLC commenced an investigation into EA surrounding the launch of Battlefield 4. Specifically, they began studying statements surrounding the game's development through the months leading up to the recent share price drop to determine if EA intentionally misled shareholders. Told you we'd get back to this. The kill trading bug was finally fixed on PC, but the update brought with it some minor technical issues. However, these issues were not game-breaking to the extent seen with the China Rising expansion. Kill trading was a consequence of poor server performance, effectively meaning that instead of just one player dying in a one-on-one, -on -one, both players would be killed simultaneously as the server couldn't keep up with the damage being dealt. As an aside, it's worth noting that I won't be detailing when major patches reached each platform. In general, patches surrounding issues like the one hit kills in kill trading reached other platforms several days after PC, but usually in no particular order. This is likely due to the different technical requirements of each platform, an issue which was especially relevant with the next expansion. Watch this space. Law firm Robbers Geller Rudman Endowed LLP filed a class action lawsuit against EA. The complaint specified the Securities Exchange Act of 1934, and argued that EA misled shareholders over development progress, allowing EA senior executives an opportunity to sell inflated stock. Naturally, the law firm was seeking payment for the damages on behalf of those who bought said stock. EA responded with a firm statement. We believe these claims are meritless. We intend to aggressively defend ourselves and we're confident the court will dismiss the complaint in due course. A second law firm filed a class action lawsuit under the same act and with a similar complaint. EA neglected to respond. A patch was released to address the three main crashing problems on PC. This goes to show that despite the difficulties that the game faced, DICE were still managing to fix it up. And who knows, maybe the bad news would soon come to an end. Battlefield 4 was officially banned in China. The Ministry of Culture explained the ban, stating, The content of DICE's game slanders the good image of the People's Liberation Army, most likely provoked by the China Rising DLC. Now, to be fair, the game was only ever sold on the grey market leading up to the ban, but in a month as challenging as this, it's an interesting footnote. The game's servers experienced what EA officially referred to as intermittent connectivity issues. 
The game's second double XP event was delayed due to connection issues. It's a fitting way to close Battlefield 4's first year, and their most challenging month by far. And so ended 2013, a year wrought with broken code, low confidence and legal difficulties. Definitely not the launch that EA anticipated, and their shareholders certainly reciprocated this disapproval. Their post-launch plans, once so meticulously detailed, were deeply compromised. And EA realised that the only way to stop a sinking ship is to get some buckets and start bailing. Through the final weeks of 2013, DICE experienced extended crunch time, releasing new patches on every platform even through the holidays. Naturally, this meant that updates had to slow eventually, and though updates were consistent through subsequent months, they were slightly less frequent. Instead of an update every few days, there would be an update, say, every week or so. Thankfully for them, the game was no longer in terminal condition, as the previous patches had made significant improvements. Despite this, some of the patches introduced their own issues, and the game was still far from an acceptable state. After floundering for a solid two months, you'd imagine that the game would have struggled financially. But you forget, this is the video game industry. In January, EA announced that Battlefield 4 was the third best-selling game in December in the Western world. This goes to show that, despite major controversy online, a game can still be massively successful. Of course, EA used this opportunity to brag, defiantly declaring that the game's sales were not affected by quality issues. In February, they introduced Player Appreciation Month. Whether you consider the name cynical or desperate, one thing was very clear. DICE were eager to hold on to their player base. Through the month, the game gave players XP boosts, character skins and a double XP weekend, and DICE also took this opportunity to answer questions directly from fans. Shortcut kits were added which you could buy to skip weapon progression, and DICE gave two to each player for free, and an additional two for premium users. Ultimately, the event seemed like a gift, a thank you to fans for sticking with the game. Well, mostly. It may have also been to do with the upcoming expansion. Second Assault was the first expansion to release following the delays, at least on most platforms. The expansion actually released first on Xbox One in November 2013 as part of a timed exclusivity deal. In conjunction with the early access for premium members, it was certainly a strange way to divide the player base. However, unlike with China Rising, the expansion didn't completely break the game. Though the Second Assault expansion was finished months before its multi-platform release, the relatively smooth full launch suggested that EA was taking more care over the game's updates. So it came as a surprise to some when the Naval Strike expansion surfaced the following month, as it managed to develop a few leaks on the way specifically in the PC and Xbox One versions, which were delayed on launch day. Despite their shortcomings, EA at least learned their lesson, and chose to delay the expansion instead of pushing out the door at the first opportunity. In April, DICE finally addressed the rubber banding issue with the netcode. Rubber banding describes an effect where the server cannot keep track of everything going on all at once, and instead updates at much longer durations. Previously, players would essentially teleport around the screen due to this issue, so the fix was a welcome one. On the 5th of May, Battlefield 4 received one of the most important additions in the series' history. The Community Test Environment, or CTE, operated as a testing server, allowing anyone with premium to test new updates on a separate client before being brought to the main servers. At the time, this was an uncommon practice for the AAA industry out of fear of fragmenting the player base. However, DICE were able to pull it off thanks to their high player counts on PC and the necessity for rigorous testing. The CTE would later appear on the Xbox One, making the Battlefield franchise one of the few to ever have console test servers. With the initial PC release, DICE began testing higher tick rates for their servers, upping it to 30Hz. From 10. Yes, 10Hz. For reference, Overwatch at launch ran at 20Hz for client to server connections and was later up to 60 due to complaints. Splatoon 2 ran at 16Hz and was considered too low despite using purely projectile based attacks. 
Basically, this update was long overdue for Battlefield 4, and the improvement brought attention to the CTE as a legitimate way to test coming updates. Overall, I think it's a really good opportunity. Potentially should have come along a little bit earlier from DICE, but as I say, nevertheless, it's here now. More than seven months after its initial launch, things were starting to look up for Battlefield 4. With three major expansions and a plethora of fixes under its belt, the game finally started to resemble a finished product. The fact it took so long to reach that point is a testament to just how dysfunctional it was at launch. But optimism amongst fans was high, and the future of the game seemed bright. Of course, the best laid schemes of Mice and Men oft go awry, and especially so considering the subject matter. EA were about to shoot themselves in the foot but not in a way that you would imagine. On May 28th, in the hype leading up to E3 2014, EA formally announced Battlefield Hardline, a new game in the series. Battlefield wasn't known as a yearly franchise, so this announcement was met with scepticism. Such scepticism was addressed by DICE the next day, when they promised that introducing Hardline in no way means we're done working on Battlefield 4. Sounds like PR nonsense, right? After all, around this time DICE explicitly stated that they wanted to move towards yearly releases. Well, this saga doesn't end the way that you might anticipate. By June, business as usual resumed for Battlefield 4. Updates continued and a new high frequency bubble system was implemented. Despite the fixes to the one hit kills, trade kills and rubber banding, the game servers still left a lot to be desired. As such, this update brought more consistent results to the game by increasing the tick rate in a set radius around each player. This meant that close up interactions would update more quickly without taking a massive toll on the servers by updating everything at the same higher rate. It's around this time that the CEO of EA and the general manager of DICE commented on the game's performance in a major interview with Eurogamer. There's a lot of information in the interview, and it is interesting to read in hindsight, but we'll focus on just two major statements. One where they call the game's launch unacceptable, and one where they promise a new development cycle for future games. Now, this is the same interview where they tried to shift some of the blame on how they were pushing all this innovation but their comments on new development methods do hold some weight. Particularly, the interviewees drew attention to how Battlefield Hardline had an open beta much earlier than its predecessor did. In fact, they announced on stage at E3 that the game would be playable on the same day, a memorable moment for anyone who watched the press conference. So, instead of launching an open beta the same month as its launch, they scaled things back to four months before the game's October target. Later down the line they also revealed that Hardline would receive a community test environment, thereby cementing it as a series staple. So when they claimed they were changing their development cycle, it was more than just PR fluff. Dragon's Teeth landed in July, as the second to last expansion for Battlefield 4. By this point the game was quite feature rich, and it seemed like EA's post launch plans would finally wrap up before the release of Hardline in October. A week later Battlefield Hardline was officially delayed, along with the final sand expansion for Battlefield 4. This was most likely to avoid another botched launch, but it meant that Hardline would miss the valuable holiday launch window. The delay of final stand may have also played a part, with Hardline requiring a delay to avoid a significant overlap. Either way, it showed a significant change in attitude from EA, who would have been reluctant to allow delays back in 2013. Despite this, Hardline was still well on track to be a success, as its beta managed to pull in over 1.7 million players. EA's plans for the franchise, though delayed once more, seemed to hold for the time being. And things slowed down. For several months, Battlefield 4 witnessed a dry spell for updates. You may think that this was an anticipation of Battlefield Hardline, but that was being handled by another developer, Visceral Games. 
In fact, DICE was working on Battlefield 4 during that time, but the result of this wouldn't be seen until September. When the Fall update finally landed, it brought with it over 200 fixes suggested by the community via use of the community test environment. In hindsight, this proves just how powerful the CTE was in improving the game in the long term. Problems were found and tested on the CTE, and using that feedback, changes were made. Without the existence of a test server, the main game client would have been swamped with buggy updates. From this point onwards, these mega updates took the place of the frequent smaller patches seen earlier in the game's lifespan. These mega updates were separated by several months each, and were most likely released in this pattern in an attempt to bring lapsed players back in. DICE likely hadn't expected to release more than a couple of these before development on the game would finally wind down. The following month, EA won their defence against one of the class action lawsuits. How's that for a throwback? You forget about that? Ultimately, the judge deemed EA's statements to be nothing more than corporate confidence, and not a breach of the Securities Exchange Act. Particularly amusing are the comments on the CFO's puffery, and labelling another quote as a vague statement of corporate optimism. Ultimately, the nail in the coffin came down to the plaintiffs, who purchased their shares before EA made most of the statements surrounding the game. If you're wondering, the second lawsuit most likely dwindled out into nothingness, due to the first providing a legal precedent. Q November, and the final stand expansion finally stood to release in an outstanding finale for the year. Yeah, no major updates for the rest of the year. By this point, eyes were mostly on Battlefield Hardline, which would have already released if not for the delays. As such, Battlefield 4 managed to coast by until the next year. If you haven't tried this yet, if you've been holding off from playing Battlefield 4 for like the last three or four months, and trust me, I wouldn't blame you, then definitely now is the time to go and give these changes a go because I think you'll find that you'll really enjoy the game and you won't get as frustrated as you did before. But overall, if you can't tell, I am thrilled with the result of the Final Stand DLC. Went going in, very hesitant, not thinking that this is going to be an expansion pack that I was going to invest a lot of time, but now that I've had a chance to play on the smaller game modes, I am clearly enjoying it, and honestly, I think that DICE hit this out of the park. Battlefield 4's second year was much more successful than the first. From Player Appreciation Month in February, to the introduction of the community test environment, to the launch of four major expansions, the year looked much healthier for the first person shooting juggernaut. The announcement of Battlefield Hardline hardly put a dent in its predecessor, and the game's delay gave Battlefield 4 more time to flourish. Though the second half of the year did see less frequent updates, it made a great case for the community test environment as a mainstay for the series. 2014 was clearly the strongest year for the game, despite still suffering some technical flaws, and in the following year, this strength would prove to have significant side effects. The next major Battlefield 4 update was the Winter Update, which landed in March. Yeah, the Winter Update in March. Delays were a recurring theme for the game, and the updates weren't exempt from this. In the same month, Battlefield Hardline finally released. Despite launching in a far better state than Battlefield 4, it suffered from a lukewarm critical response, and fans consider the game a watered-down version of the former release. Though we're mainly observing Battlefield 4 here, it is vital to understand Hardline's performance, as the mere existence of Battlefield 4 and its updates had a major effect on the game. Without further ado, here's what you should know. As of November 2017, Battlefield 4 averages at around 60,000 players across all platforms. Battlefield Hardline averages at… 8,000. Only when you look at the player count trend lines do you begin to understand just how dire the situation was for Hardline, and it's quite clear why this was the case. Hardline focused on a cops and robbers theme, therefore sacrificing the variety of vehicles and weapons that the previous game's military setting allowed. The gameplay in general was regarded as being weak in comparison to Battlefield 4, which by then was a complete package. Hardline released just 17 months after Battlefield 4, which for the games industry isn't that soon, 
until you factor in the delays. The majority of Battlefield 4 expansions were delayed to allow for bug fixing time, and the Final Stand expansion was further delayed, launching just 4 months before Hardline's release. DICE had no option but to fix their game, for they would risk losing customers if they were seen neglecting a major entry in the franchise. To them, fixing the game was the top priority, and Hardline was an unrelated project from another developer. Funnily enough, the saving grace of Battlefield 4, the ability to easily update the game, was perhaps the killing blow for Hardline. On more than one level, Hardline flatlined, and it played a part in Visceral Games' closure two years later. Just two months later, Battlefield 4 had eclipsed Hardline in player counts. And, like with the original reveal for Hardline, business as usual soon resumed for the numbered outing. Testing for higher tickrate servers began on the CTE, and not long after the spring update sprung. With this, DICE revealed some major news. Battlefield 4 would continue to be updated beyond the initial plans, and all future content would be free for all players. Whether this decision was made after the release of Hardline is unclear, but one thing is for certain. EA knew that further supporting Battlefield 4 would keep the series relevant in the run-up to their next major Battlefield title, now over a year away. The three updates were referred to as Operations, and the first was the Weapons Crate Pack, a bundle of five new weapons, a returning game mode from Battlefield 3, and general tweaks to gunplay. And once again, things would go quiet until September. Future operations would mainly introduce new or modified maps to the game alongside the usual major patch log. Come September, nighttime versions of two existing maps were added, and the coinciding summer patch brought changes to the sound system, weapon balancing, and team balancing, as well as a plethora of other improvements. At the end of the month, DICE introduced a tick rate option for players on PC, allowing tick rates of up to 144Hz. In the space of two years, Battlefield 4 went from having one of the lowest tick rates in the genre to offering some of the highest in the industry. In October, community-made maps were added in the Fall Update. Patch notes for these major updates can still be found easily, as DICE originally published them as PDF files. And my god, they are massive. This one was 30 pages long, filled to the brim with various fixes and tweaks. This alone demonstrates that, though the game was now functional, DICE were determined to make it even better. Tell someone that back in 2013, and they would scoff at you. The last major update came in December. The holiday update released with Legacy Operations, a remake of the Battlefield 2 map Dragon Valley, and with it came the traditional laundry list of patch notes, though somewhat smaller this time. This update was also the final update for 2015, ending a strong but bittersweet year for the game. Riding on the back of its success the previous year, it couldn't help but completely overshadow the release of Battlefield Hardline. It's hard to outlive your successor, but EA decided to cut their losses, and while paid for expansions were still releasing for Hardline, Battlefield 4 would receive entirely free updates to keep the series relevant. Battlefield 4 likely wasn't the root of its successor's demise, but it definitely played a strong part. Consider this the metaphorical part of the story where Battlefield 4 settles down, moves to a ranch in the countryside, and enjoys the spring breeze whistling gracefully over the crops. The game remained relevant for longer than EA had anticipated, and far more than any launch day buyers believed. Two months of panic, a year of recovery, a victory lap, and now, well, there wasn't much left to do. Player counts remained fairly consistent through the first half of the year, and the game still received small updates, such as the addition of higher tick rates for the console versions of the game. Like I said, not much to report. In May, EA gave away expansions for Battlefield 4 and Hardline for free, in the lead up to the eventual sequel announcement before E3. As expected, Battlefield 1 was revealed two days later on the 6th of May 2016. That's all she wrote. No seriously, that's it. The only other update Battlefield 4 would receive was a menu update. To coincide with the design of Battlefield 1's menu, DICE was finished with Battlefield 4. They'd saved it, improved it, and now they were moving on to greener pastures. Despite this, the metaphorical crop field remained prosperous. Even without updates, player counts stayed consistent. 
Sure, there was a sharp rise and fall before the launch of Battlefield 1, but even now at the end of 2017, player counts rival that of two years ago. That's likely in part because Battlefield 1 is a World War 1 shooter, allowing Battlefield 4 to remain king of the modern military aspect of the franchise. Battlefield 4 would prove to be a major technical hurdle that DICE and EA managed to overcome. However, the time that the game released also did it a great service that can't be ignored. As of 4 months before the game's launch, Microsoft still charged developers a fee to update their games on the Xbox 360. This fee, according to Fez developer Polytron, could be up to tens of thousands of dollars for recertification. The only reason Microsoft changed their mind was from the mounting pressure from publishers and developers. The rapidly growing Steam platform demonstrated an environment where developers could constantly update their games for free, and so consoles followed suit. The Xbox One and PlayStation 4 would make game updates free on their service. Without this, the cost to fix Battlefield 4 would have been gargantuan, and EA would have likely left it in its dire launch state. The year of 2013 was also one riddled with buggy games. The rush to get games on the new platforms and the lack of familiarity with said platforms resulted in many poorly optimised or outright broken games. Battlefield 4 was an especially extravagant case, but without the backdrop of other technically challenged games, EA's PR could have faced a much more dangerous situation. Battlefield 4 The Broken Game helped to define the games industry in 2013, but it also relied on industry standards at the time to aid in its recovery. In a way, the game tells a story, and a good one at that. EA imagined the profits from a new console generation and released an unfinished game to widespread criticism. Despite the sales success, EA realised the potential impact of the bad PR, and had DICE work on fixes immediately following the launch. The choice to release the game across five different platforms would have created an additional logistical hurdle, further slowing the development of fixes. EA continued with their original post-launch plans eager to justify the purchase of Battlefield 4 Premium. This backfired with the buggy launch of their first expansion to the point when they announced the delay of future projects so they could fix the game. Said delays had a knock-on effect on Battlefield Hardline due to the close proximity between it and the final Battlefield 4 expansions. It also directly affected Mirror's Edge Catalyst and Star Wars Battlefront, the former delayed and the latter lacking in content in order to meet a deadline. The delays also resulted in two class action lawsuits which ended up going nowhere. Despite these shortcomings, DICE managed to roll out a plethora of patches, which would eventually fix the game. Not only that, but they did manage to incentivize their premium service throughout with additional benefits. All in all, EA and DICE managed to turn a disaster into a bittersweet victory, with a game that managed to hold a dedicated community that has seen both the best and worst of times. Though, were updates not an industry standard by that point, the story could have ended very differently. Battlefield 4 was a product of its time, that only survived as a result of its time. Whew. Thank you for watching. This video was a long time coming so I'd seriously appreciate it if you could give me some feedback. I want to know what worked and what didn't so I can improve the next one. I've also provided a list of sources in the description if you're interested. It was difficult to find information on the game as many of the pages on the official website can't be accessed directly anymore. Regardless, I managed to find enough to tell a complete story. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch this. I mean it.